Okay, so, okay, so um, we're going to look at uh, swinging something around in a circle. Let me just take some, I just happen to have this on my desk. If I swing this around in a circle, over, over, so that object moves in a horizontal circle, uh, right away you should be able to notice that the angle that this is at changes. Um, so, um, so it depends on lots of things here, you know, the tension in the string, how fast it's going, what the angle is. So let's look at an object moving in a circle. So here's some object. And so it's coming in and out of the board like this. It's moving in a horizontal circle. And it's supported by, so here's the center. It's supported by a string like this. For our experiment, this is going to go through a glass tube and then hang a mass down there so we can actually know the tension in the string because it'll be the same as the weight on the end. Well, let's focus on this. Um, so it's moving around in a circle. At this instant, uh, it's going at a constant speed, but it does have an acceleration. When an object moves in a circle at a constant speed, it's accelerating because its velocity is changing, even though the magnitude is constant. So what force is acting on this, this object? Well, think of it this way. What's touching it? And what long-range forces do we have? Long-range forces, we have gravity. And then the only other thing touching it is this, the rope. And strings, ropes, have a unique property in that they can only pull in the direction that they're stretched. They can't push. They can't twist things. They only pull. Okay. So let's say that's some angle theta. So, if I use Newton's second law uh, for, let me call this the x and the y direction, then I can say f net y equals m a y equals zero. The change in motion in the vertical direction is zero since it's staying in a horizontal circle at a constant vertical velocity of zero. So, let me go ahead and, and break this into components. Well, the gravity is in the y direction, and then I have part of the tension in the x and part in the y. So the y component of tension is going to be uh, the opposite, so it's going to be t sine theta minus mg equals zero. So I can get from this, you could get lots of things. Um, you know, if, you, if I knew the tension, I could find the angle theta. Okay. And you notice that doesn't depend on this length at all. Let me call this the length of the string uh, right there. Okay. Okay, now what about the uh, horizontal direction? I can say F net X equals M A X. So, in the x direction, what force do I have? At this particular instant, I just have a component of the tension force. Uh, looking at this right triangle here, it's the adjacent side. So that's going to be t cosine theta. Is the acceleration zero? No. When an object moves in a circle, it has an acceleration, and the direction is towards the center of the circle. So it has an acceleration that way. The magnitude of an acceleration for something moving in the circle at a constant speed is velocity squared over the radius of that circle. So this is going to be m v squared over r. Okay. So I can measure how fast it's going by, by cat. Well, I'm not going to measure the velocity. I'm going to measure the period. So what do I want to do now? Well, let me go ahead and solve this for t. T equals mg over the sine of theta, and plug that in over here, and I get mg cosine theta over the sine of theta equals m v squared over r. What about r? r is not a parameter that I'm actually going to measure. I'm not going to actually measure theta either, but I can find theta from this. But r I can determine because look here, 
this is R. And this is a right triangle. So if that is a length L, which I can measure, um, you can make sure you have the, your string length constant. Then R is going to be L cosine theta. So this becomes mg cosine theta over sine theta equals m v squared over L cosine theta. I, I actually shouldn't have done that right away, but it's okay. And the other thing I need to get rid of is v because I don't, I'm not going to measure v. What I'm going to measure is the period or how long it takes to go around once. So if I look at v equals the, how far it goes, which is going to be 2 pi r, over how long it takes, which is the period. But I just said r was that. So I get v equals 2 pi r is uh, L cosine theta over the period t. So this equation, uh, which the mass cancels, and this is the mass on the end, not this mass. So I get, I'm going to erase that. So I get g cosine theta over sine theta equals v squared, which is going to be equal to um, 4 pi squared, L squared, cosine squared theta over, where did I go? R, which is L cosine theta. So I get that cancels, that cancels, and I get, oh, and that cancels. So I get G over sine theta equals 4 pi squared L. Where did the T go? I, I left the T squared off. T squared. So it should be T squared down here. T squared right there. T squared. Let's just check real quick because, you know, you never know if you're going to make a mistake. The units for G could be written in meters per second squared. That has no units. No units. Meters. Second squared. So the units work out. Okay. Um, what if I want to get this in terms of the tension, which I, unfortunately, because I'm a dummy, call T also. Um, this is, if I look right here, 10, I'll call it TE for tension. I know that's dumb. Uh, for this, this stays in equilibrium. So the tension is equal to uh, M load, I'll call it, times G. So over here, uh, sine theta, I'm getting messy here, didn't do my best planning job, is uh, mass of the object times G over tension, where tension is mass of the load times G. So this is going to be mass of the object over mass of the load is sine theta. So if I put that in right here, I get G over M object M load equals 4 pi squared L over period squared. So now I have a relationship between things that I can actually measure. I can measure the mass of the object. I can measure the mass of the load down here. I, G is 9.8. Uh, the length, I can measure that. And the period of oscillation, or how long it takes to go around. You know, I can count how, how long it takes, measure time, how long it takes to go around 10 times, and then divide by 10 to get the period. And then I can, I'll let you think about, what should you plot uh, here to show that this is actually uh, about the correct relationship? Because those are all things you can measure. Okay. That's a good place to stop.